ओके सो लेट्स कंटिन्यू विद आवर काफका पाइथन ट्यूटोरियल सीरीज सो इन द लास्ट वीडियो व्हाट वी हैव डन इज वी हैव क्रिएटेड अ कंज्यूमर व्हिच इज लाइक कंज्यूमिंग सम मैसेज सो लेट मी शो यू द कोड सो दिस इज आवर लाइक कंज्यूमर कोड व्हिच इज गोइंग टू बी रन ऑलवेज सो दैट्स व्हाई वी हैव पुट इन सम लाइक व्हाइल ट्रू कंडीशन एंड इट इज कंज्यूमिंग सम मैसेज एंड लेट मी शो यू इन द प्रैक्टिकल सो वी आवर रेड पॉइंट क्लस्टर इज अप and this is our producer we run our producer in one of the terminal and we are sending some messages so let me send some message and this is our consumer uh, which is going to run on the some other uh, terminal and it is consuming the message along with that we can check uh, over the red panda console uh, whether the message has been published or not so it has two messages so click on the message and it has two messages right but if you noticed here so in this video basically we are going to cover about the serialization deserialization technique but before that why we are going to learn about serialization deserialization in the kafka tutorial series the reason is because if you noticed uh, let me open the code and if you notice in the python in the producer code so let me remove this so in the producer code we took some input right so in producer means which is going to produce some message which is going to send some message to the kafka cluster so we said okay Uh, we ask the user okay can you enter your message which you want to send so input is like this message is basically string and then this string is going to passed in this message send message and this send message we are passing uh, it is going to accept the argument message so it is still a string and we are going to produce the message and the message is going to produce so we are sending a string message right so in a form of a string so no where we are encoding and decoding right so we are accepting as a string we are sending as is message right so when we send the string all right so ideally ideally on the consumer side on the consumer side string should become all right so if the producer is sending string so producer send sumanshu or producer send hi but on the consumer side if you noticed on the consumer side we are getting like uh, bytes all right so it is a byte inside of a string we are getting byte so even in the code in the consumer code when we like uh, notice here so here we use decode but if we don't decode if we just uh, like uh, uh, run the print command message comes you message dot value and we can check the type so our message type is our message is this and we have the b in front of that so which means it's a bytes and this is a class bytes so how this is like happening we are sending a string but from the kafka it is coming as a bytes so how, why so the reason is how the kafka architecture is like uh, like designed is so producer is send the message in any format string json avro any for, format it is going to serialize the message i am going to tell you what is serialize it is going to serialize and it is going to convert into a bytes and then these bytes are going to store into the kafka cluster so so in the kafka cluster the message to store in the form of a bytes so now the consumer is going to store in is consume in a form of a bytes only so if you need in a form of string then you need to deserialize it all right so you need to deserialize it so that's why we use like the decode statement now you can you can question but while sending the message on the one on the one side i'm saying when the uh, producer need to send the message in a form of a bytes but we are sending in a form of a string so we are not encoding here but in the consumer side we are decoding but in the producer side we are not encoding so the reason is uh, because we are using like confident kafka producer and this producer class has automatic inbuilt uh, string serialization uh, a method available so but before jump into all this thing what is serialization deserialization let's uh, let me go to the mark so what is serialization and deserialization in the python term so i think in the python or it could be any but in our case it's a python only right so we have the python object so python means python object means we have a string so string is a python right so uh, python data type it could be in the java uh, c sharp c++ any but consider about the python only so we in the in the message in the producer message so we are taking as a string all right so string so this is a python object so string is we are taking as a python object right so now if we serialize it so serialization means convert python object into a bytes form and deserialization means the bytes form can be again converted to the python object so that's why when the producer send the message 
it uses the concept of the serialization. When the consumer consumes a message, it uses the concept of the deserialization. So this is the wider terminology, serialization, deserialization. But how it like uh, work in the Kafka architecture? So we have this producer application, we have this consumer application, and we have this Kafka architecture, right? So producer is sending the message, consumer is consuming the message. All right. So I, I have told you, producer need to send the message in the form of a bytes. Or it doesn't matter whether you uh, like uh, it needs to be sent into the form of a bytes all right so so like in the in this example we are taking as a string so if we take it as a string so internally internally it it should be converted automatically in the form of a bytes all right because the kafka uh, needs the message not in the form of a string it it needs in the form of a bytes all right so ideally Ideally, when we pass the message in like in the produce function, we need to use dot encode and we can do UTF-8. Right. So ideally we need to do that. But we have not done that. Why we have not done that? Because we are using confident Kafka class, that producer class, which is providing inbuilt functionality, which is providing inbuilt functionality. I can show you that as well. So if you go to serialization, so let me, this is our, this is our like a library which we are using. So hopefully some, yeah, if you go to the serialization and if you search here string serialization, string serialization. So in the string serialization, and if you, you can see, we are using the encode function. So by default, like string serialization, uh, uh, is being supported by default. So by default is a string serialization. So by default, it's, it says, uh, okay, the user is sending the string message. So automatically it is using the string serialization. And as per that, it is encoding. So that's why we don't need to manually uh, write here dot encode. Basically, we don't need to manually convert into a bytes. But on the consumer side, you could see, uh, you could see if we just consume message dot value, message dot value, Right, we are we are like uh, we get in the form of a bytes. So in in the consumer side, we need to perform the like the deserialization of the string. So that's why we use the dot decode method. Alright. So in the Kafka architecture, let me go to the diagram again. So in the Kafka so producer need to send the message. So producer before sending the message, it will serialize that message. Right. So it will serialize that, that message. So whether uh, you need to pass that serialization like maybe dot encode or, or you use some some third party library or if you are not encoding maybe it is default serialization it is being used but serialization is being used at the consumer side so whatever the python object you are passing it is going to convert it is use a serialization basically serialization it is going to convert from python object to the to the bytes all right then it will go to the Kafka cluster and then it is going to like uh, then the bytes is going to consume and then the deserialization is going to be happen. That is the bytes object will convert into the pipe back to the Python objects. All right. But this is the concept of the string. By default, we are passing a string. But in actual in actual world, we don't uh, generally pass the message in a form of a string. So you could see this is very vague message. In the Kafka, we don't generally pass this kind of message, right? In actual project. This is just a very vague message. So we pass in a defined structure and those defined structure either in a form of a abro either in a form of a protobuf like like this kind of defined defined structure all right so these particular have like some kind of fields so whenever the message is going to be sent it should have some schema it should have some structure all right so we can send either in a form of abro we can send either in a form of protobuf we can send either in a form of a json all right okay so when so I said like when we send the message generally in actual world, so string is just for our learning purpose. But now when we are going to learn uh, or do an actual project, either we use JSON, either we use, use Avro. So JSON and Avro are like widely used. Protobuf also also be like uh, uh, used, but not widely. So what it will do? So we have to define the schema. All right. So because we are sending some message, uh, we have to define the schema uh, or you can say the JSON uh, json uh, json schema all right so producer application so we are going to define the schema within the producer code 
all right so just forget about the schema registry so we are going to define the schema uh, if if like if it is json if it is avro it is protobuf whatever it is so generally we define in the producer uh, in local application right and the same schema should be because by we are giving some message so if it is not string message it's a very long message in a form of a json right then to convert into the bytes form it should know its structure it should know its structure right so so we need to, to what is the actual the structure so we need to pass the schema right so we need to pass the schema so that's why the schema will be here and now to convert back from bytes to the python object so it should know the structure to do, do the deserialization so it should also know the schema so one option is that we can copy the schema here as well we can copy the schema on the consumer side or the other option is we can create a central repository central SAML repository so within the kafka cluster we have the concept of that so if, if, if you come to the uh red panda cluster so you could see overview where we could see okay how many topics how many broker online whether the broker is running or not in the topics we can see okay what are the topics we can create the topic there is a called a schema registry so where we can create our new schema so either you can create the schema using the uh using ui so schema is specific to the particular topic so basically in this topic in this topic currently i am passing the string message but i want this topic should accept the message in particular format so as an example we have multiple microservices order microservices uh let me jump to the our my first video uh let me jump yeah so we have the order microservice we have the package microservice we have the shipping microservice we have the notification microservice right so all the microservice is using the central graph property right so order microservice will send some message in some format it has some different field maybe it's order id date timestamp price package id has some other other fields maybe label right shipping uh, like uh, microservice has some other labels like uh, address and notifications has some other label right email id or mobile number some kind of label right so order service when it send the message it is going to send in some particular topic so order service is going to send in the order topic package service is going to send in the package topic shipping service is going to send the message in the shipping topic notification service is going to send the message in the notification topic so there could be four topics all right and maybe like this is the uh, monitoring service so this monitoring service is a consumer and it is uh, it it needs the logs from all the service so it is going to subscribe all the topics and it will consume the data but order service is going to send the data or message in the order topic and we know there is a very huge syntax so we need to define the schema for the particular topic so that's why uh, schema belongs to the particular topic so in the order order service if we are publishing the data we know okay the structure will be order id and this 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 so many field so we can create a schema uh in avro protobuf for json and we can publish that right so one one option is one option is so let me scroll down so one option is you can uh, put the schema uh here as well and you can put the schema on the consumer side as well right but other option is so producer will publish the schema in the schema registry so using the code you can put the schema into the schema registry or you, either you can manually create so if you manually create the schema here then the produce what the producer will do producer will fetch the schema right so fetch the schema and to do the serialization it will use the schema it it has the message it has the schema and it will convert that message into the bytes by using by like fetching the schema same for the consumer consumer will fetch the schema from the schema registry and uh, because we have the we the bytes message are coming so it has to be converted into the python object or maybe json or whatever format whatever format it is then it is used the schema and it will store locally and it is going to convert into that so the how the step is going to be run so generally then if you come here so i am continuously saying we can publish in json avro protobuf but if you notice here uh, if I, if i have to manually create so if only two option is given avro and protobuf but json is not given so the reason is json is very simple like a schema so generally we don't need to publish it 
because json is a, a kind of a dictionary only right so in the dictionary it's a, like a, we can use json dot dumps json dot loads to serialize or you can say to convert into the byte and from byte to again the python object but for the avro and the proto book like uh, we have to publish the schema all right so so what are the steps so basically what are the the producer application typically defines a schema for the message it want to send so i said because producer has to publish the message so in which schema it is like what is the structure of the message so producer application will define the schema along with that this schema may be registered within the schema registry if it is ever and proto buff all right so it is going to register into the schema registry when the producer application want to send a message so if the producer application want to send a message it serializes the message serialization means it is going to convert the message into the bytes format according to the schema only according to the schema only this serialization process cannot convert in the message data into the byte array then the producer then send the serialized message so we have converted that now we have the byte array, array or byte message serialized message so now the this serialized message will send into the kafka topic now the kafka broker receive the serialized message or you can say the byte message right and with going to store into the kafka topic in, into the particular partition and particular offset okay now on the consumer application consumer application will subscribe to one of the kafka topic right and periodically polls so periodically like see okay do we uh, like is there any message which i need is there any message so continuously poll it. so when the message is received the consumer deserialize the message from its byte array because it is getting in the bytes the byte array from back into the structure format structure format means like either json uh, or maybe avro or protobuf all right if the message was serialized using the schema based format the consumer may retrieve the schema from the schema registry because it has to convert into the uh, particular format but what is the format which has to be converted so it should consume the schema from the schema registry and then can do the deserialization and then schema has the consumer to understand the structure of the serialization data and deserialize it correctly all right so this is the concept of the serialization and the deserialization why we have like a, a, like done this topic because in the coming video because till now we are pa like passing only like string message but in the coming video we are going to send in a form of a json in a form of avro so as i told you in form of a json there is no need to register the schema into the schema registry because json is a straight forward uh, straight forward message so you don't need to register so you don't need to do this extra step so publish the schema and retrieve the schema so you don't need to do that you want to do you can do that but there is no need to publish and retrieve the schema so generally uh, because this json is very like simple so you can put the schema within the producer application code basically hard coded maybe create some variable or in a file right so this is my schema schema is equal to that particular schema same and in the consumer application you can like uh, put that right but in form of avro and protobuf you have to publish the schema to the schema registry all right so in the coming video we are going to see how we are going to publish into the json format so in this case uh, we are not going to publish into the schema registry but when we cover this topic avro format we will publish the schema into the schema registry so that's it that's the end of the video uh, thank you